Hi! In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to make weave patterns. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The Tile Generator node is a powerful node to make regular or random patterns. It's a simpler version of the Tile Sampler node, with less controls and inputs. It is used to offset the entire pattern incrementally over every row or column and depends on the vertical offset parameter. Global offset shifts the entire pattern in X or Y direction. The Weave Generator nodes generates a simple weave pattern with more controls than the predefined weave patterns. Shape sets the curve height profile of the stitches. Weave sets the stitches amount per block. The skew node skews the input image. Amount is the strength of the skew effect. Sets the origin point of the skew transformation. Let's build this basic setup together and learn how we make base weave patterns for baskets and more. For this quick tip example we'll start with a shape node and reduce the scale to 0.9 and the size y to 0.3 for a smaller and lower shape. Let's connect it to a blend node. As foreground we use a 90 degrees rotated gradient linear 2 node and switch the mode to multiply. Then we continue with a Blur HQ grayscale node to blur the base shape slightly. To get the base pattern we add a Tile Generator node. We use Shift and left mouse button to move it to the upper input. As pattern we use the image input. Now we adjust the X amount to 8 and the Y amount to 40 and switch the rotation to 90 degrees. As size mode we choose normal size and tweak the size Y to 1.55. To offset the rows we increase the offset to 0.5 and for a whole image offset we use a small global offset y value of 0.025. Let's duplicate this tile generator node, switch the rotation to 0 and increase the size y value to 3.3. We also have to get rid of the global offset y value to perfectly match the gaps. Then we use a blend node with the max lighten blending mode to blend both tile generator nodes together. To get an opacity mask we simply connect it to a histogram scan node. Increase the position to 0.6 and the contrast to 0.9 for a slightly blurred mask. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. Let's explore a slightly more advanced setup and check out some other methods for weave patterns. To get variation for the base shape I use a warp node. As intensity input I use a Perlin noise node and to achieve variation I simply offset it with the random offset mode of a safe transform grayscale node. If I want to have independent control over the rows and columns I could even use different deformations for the horizontal and vertical tile generator inputs. For an overall base deformation I simply use a warp node with a smaller purlin noise as input. If I want to deform it directional I further use a directional warp node. A blurred anisotropic noise node results in a nice, more random noise. The Weave Generator node is another method to create some basic patterns. With the tile X and Y slider you control the amount. Shape controls the height curve and Weave is used for the stitches amount per block. The combination of these parameters is good for creating a variation of patterns quickly. It even has outputs for the opacity plus masks for rows and columns. To make a hexagonal weave I use a gradient linear 2 node as starting point. To tweak the gradient I use a levels node and adjust the level in mid and level in high sliders. This helps to define the height curve of the weave. I transformed it by 2 and got rid of the tiling. The skew node is great to deform shapes while holding them in position with the center align mode. To array the shape circular I use the splatter circular node. To align the hexagon shapes I finally use the tile generator node. Because hexagons aren't similar in X and Y size I use different X and Y amount. By playing with the vertical offset, size Y and scale I achieve this really nice weave pattern. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. 
See you in the next Quick Tip episode.